Hello, I'm Cindy Daycheck with Queen Bee Creations. Welcome to the channel. If you're returning, thank you so much for checking us out again. If you're brand new, then I invite you to check out a lot of the previous videos as well and keep an eye out because we come at you twice a week with brand new projects and ideas. Now, today, what I wanted to do was I wanted to play with some corbels. Um, these tend to be, you know, when you get the antique ones that are shaped, solid wood, that are, you know, got the natural wear and the chippiness happening, they are super crazy expensive. So what I have are some new wood ones. So these ones are solid wood. Both of these I'm gonna show you are from Jamie Ray Vintage and you can pick up plain corbels from uh, their website and because um, I may or may not have them in stock so uh, we'll see we'll see I mean you can check out my website and see otherwise check out Jamie Ray Vintage but you can get other wood pieces to be able to do these things but they're not going to be nearly as interesting if they don't have that chippy aged look to them so we're gonna take these brand new babies and make them look old. And our first step in this process, and we're gonna be using milk paint to do this because nothing gives you the chippy look like milk paint does. But I don't want it chipping back to reveal this color of wood, you know, or this color of wood. I want it to reveal something dark. So I'm gonna be using Dark and Decrepit um, by DIY. And dark and decrepit is both um, a sealer, a stain, a, it's just like a magic product. So it's going to go on, it's going to seal the piece. So when I go, when that uh, milk paint goes to chip down to it, this is the color that it's going to reveal underneath. We want it to kind of have that chippy under layer. Now you could choose to add an additional color to this. Maybe you want to add like a green color and then paint it white over top so that maybe you'll get some chipping revealing the green because a lot of times these super old corbels were used multiple times, right? They're painted over and over and over again, especially if they were outdoors used on a house. They got painted every time the house got painted. So they would have multiple layers of paint. So think about the look that you're after and what you would like. You could certainly um, paint like a, a green over this maybe or a blue and then do a white or you know a yellow and then a blue over top. Think about what the finished look is that you're after. I'm gonna be putting these, whoops. I'm gonna be putting these for sale in the shop so I'm gonna stick with, you know, some colors that I think would sell well in the shop. But I think what I'll do is I'm gonna put the dark and decrepit on both for sure um, to get that, get that painted up um, and have some of that dark revealed regardless. And, um, then maybe I'll paint one of these a second color and leave the other one just with the dark and decrepit before we finish them both with a white. So we'll be using probably flower sack from the Sweet Pickens milk paint line, which is available on my website, queenbeecreationshome.com if you don't already have a distributor close by you. You can check it out and all the, all the tons of, of colors. This set of corbels, because it's a simpler um, of the two designs, I think could look really cute with an undercoating color to chip back to. And I'd like to show you, since I'm doing two, I'd like to show you what that looks like. So what, I'm, what I have here is Farm Fresh from the DIY paint line. And I just wanted something, as long as I was doing it, I didn't want it to be so pale that 
when the other paint chips, it doesn't show, right? <laughs> I'd like us to be able to see some of the green. Now, you'll notice that I did stain the back and the underside. Those are the parts that would ultimately be up against your wall, your shell, you know, whatever you're using the corbels for. So I stained them just so that we had um, a look other than just the natural wood. And because this is untreated wood, um, the dark and decrepit seals it in. So it's at least kind of sealed and treated, but I'm not gonna agonize over painting that part, right? So at least when I'm, when I'm painting my piece, I have some surfaces now that it can just stand upright and, and dry that way and I don't have to, to worry about any section. So I would hope that with some of the chipping, I'm gonna get some that, that reveals some of the green, some that reveals some of the um, darkened carpet, but you know, here's the, here's the thing with, with milk paint. You have no idea. <laughs> You know, you have no idea the type of chips. Are you gonna get big ones? Are you gonna get little ones? Are you gonna get chipping? Um, is it gonna decide, oh no, I don't wanna chip at all for you. So it's kind of one of the beauties of the chip paint and one of the frustrations of the chip, chipping paint, of the milk paint is just, um, you don't have control. So if you are a high control person, you probably are not somebody that likes the look of, um, of shabby chic, of, of chippy paint anyway, because you would probably, <laughs> you probably like things to be a little bit more uh, precise looking in terms of painting. But, so in which case, this look is probably not for you anyway. But if you're somebody that likes that age, that patina, that worn kind of um, weathered look, this is how you get it. So let's move that baby off to the side. And I'm just gonna finish painting this one up before I rejoin you and we do some of our milk painting together. Before we can get started painting our corbels white, we need to mix up our milk paint. Now, if you're not familiar with milk paint, it comes in a powdered format. Sorry, I just have it in a baggie right now. Um, it comes in a powdered format and you, mix it as you need it. So the nice thing about it is that it's very shelf stable, meaning your paint's not gonna dry out on you, you're not going to you know, use, use something once and then you're, you're going, okay, I didn't use it for another month and you come back and the lid wasn't on and it's dried out your paint. You don't have any of those problems or worries or woes. The mixing it up kind of freaks people out sometimes. <laughs> Because they think of it as not being convenient as opposed to it's infinitely more convenient if you're not using your paint fast or often. Generally speaking, all you are doing is mixing the powder with water. If you're mixing a lot of paint, you know, a fair bit, you're doing a dresser, an armoire, that sort of thing, then I strongly recommend mixing it using an immersion blender, which is what I typically do but I'm just painting out a couple of corbels and I don't want to make tons of paint because it doesn't last. You can mix it up and put it in a sealed jar in the fridge and it'll keep a couple of days, but it's not keeping weeks, months, whatever. It's like milk, it goes bad. So we're just gonna be mixing up a bit of paint. And I like mixing, adding the dry powder to the water and I like using warm water. So for this, because I'm just using a little bit, an immersion blender doesn't tend to get down in there enough. So you could use a whisk and do it with a whisk, or I'm just gonna toss it in a jar and then shake it up. Now, I do like to mix up my milk paint and let it sit for you know, 15 to 20 minutes before I use it. I find then that the, the milk solids kind of um, mix in a little bit better. It just kind of absorbs into the paint. It just is a little creamier. So I am just going to get this shaken up, leave it sitting for about 20 minutes and then come back at you and we'll do some painting. 
Okay, my milk paint is ready. So a nice, nice bright white. And it's simply as easy as painting it on. I'm gonna be doing two coats. So I'll let this one coat uh, pretty much mostly dry. It really doesn't take long to dry at all. And then I will add a second coat and leave it, leave it overnight and see, see what kind of chipping we get. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing with these brown stained ones. So again, this has the dark and decrepit, and then it has paint over top. The other one just has the dark and decrepit. And we're just going to paint them up. This is easier for me to do it this way. There we go. So we're just gonna paint them up two coats and see what kind of chipping. Our corbels have dried and I have taken um, a, a bit of my sanding mouse to them already, but I have more that I want to sand. So that was a 60 grit that I used on the uh, sanding mouse. This is an 80, this is a 320. And I just, I always find that I need to, to go in by hand here and there to add in some of the details where I really want. So on this one, you'll recall we had done, um, we had done the, the green first and then the white. I did not, so you will notice with the milk paint, I did not add any bonding agent. And milk paint, when you just mix it up, if you don't want any chipping or you wanna minimize the amount of chipping, I should say, because there's no guarantee you'll get none, uh, you add bonding agent to it, and that helps it adhere and not chip as much. The less bonding agent to zero bonding agent typically guarantees that you're going to get chipping, which is what I wanted. So, of course, I added zero bonding, and I got no chipping. <laughs> okay, milk paint is just, <laughs> it's just one of those things that, you know, don't ever say out loud you want no chipping because then it hears you and you will get tons. I made the mistake of saying out loud, I want tons of chipping and I got none. It's the way it goes. So, you know, it's kind of the joy and the fun and the pleasure of it. And it's always a bit of a, of a crapshoot. So what I am doing here, so you can see some of the the chippiness that I got around the edges. So some of from the sander that I got that's adding some age. I just wanna go in by hand and add a little bit more. And I will use the 80 and then I will finish off with the um, 320 just to smooth everything out. Um, but that's what I'm doing with both of them. This is the one that we just had the, the dark. So it's just showing up a bit on the edges, but this one was particularly difficult to use the sander. You're only gonna hit some of the the high spots and that's it. So it definitely needs uh, some of the hand sanding with it, um, which is maybe a little bit of a minus with that design. J just saying, <laughs> this one's easier. Uh, but I'm gonna finish that by hand and then I'll come back at you just as we go to seal it all so that you see that part of the process too. But you really don't wanna listen to this sound too much over over the video because then, then I get people complaining that they had to plug their ears. So I'm going to carry on with this and then rejoin when they're all sanded and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, the sanding is all done on my corbels and I just want to kind of be with you to show the finishing. Now, what I am going to do is first do just a layer of clear wax because especially like where we use the green and things, I wanna see how much of that comes out. And again, I'm using um, DIY waxes. So I, I do have white wax out as well. And I have some decrepit dust that, um, you know, I've got a couple of spots 
where I've got a little bit of cracking happening and so I'm thinking that it might be cool to do a little bit of the decrepit dust. I don't know, let's see. But I wanted to see how much of the green shows through here. And if I'd had a lot of chipping happening, I would have seen a lot more of the green, but what I do get, I have a lot happening on the front edge and then some happening on the sides. So you can see coming down here. And if you look at like the coral bowl would be, you know, probably this way. We'll have a lot of cool look to that. You don't want so much that that's all that you notice, but you do want some. Now this one, here's the one in particular. I had one in particular, I could see some cool cracking. Yeah, it's very subtle. So what I wanna do, cause you're not, you're not even gonna see it. I mean, look at how much I had to look to see it myself. So let me get some, let me get some wax on it. All right, so you can't really even see any of those cracks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some decrepit dust and this is from DIY as well. So it's a powder and I have kind of a brush. I'm just gonna dip it in and I'm going to rub that in over top of these areas. Now it goes very far and that was even more than I wanted. So I'm gonna take a little bit of wax to just, and here's where I'm using the white wax. I'm just going back over top of that because I ended up with a lot more showing up than I wanted. I just want it down in the cracks. So I'm going over those areas where the cracks are, kind of pushing some of that dust down, taking a cloth, dipping it into my white wax, and going over top. So let me show you first. You can see kind of all that darkness along there. And the white wax kind of takes that upper level of that decrepit dust off but it's leaving it down in those cracks so you can see more of those cracks happening. So it's a blatant look, but it's a very cool, subtle look. So this one, um, these two corbels in particular, I'm going to be doing that too and aging them a little bit with that decrepit dust. I'm gonna do the same thing on these other ones. Anywhere that I see that I've got a little bit of texture happening, just, just to highlight it a little bit more. And it's just a cool way to, again, add a little bit of age. This is just my clear wax again. So just adding a little bit of age to the piece without it being a totally blatant in your face kind of thing. So I am just going to finish waxing. So these will be waxed all over at least the one time. I'm going to add a little bit of the decrepit dust here and there to give a little bit more age and detail and character. I will use some of my, my white wax to soften that. You could use clear wax again too, right? Um, but I'll, I'll add a little bit of that but I just wanna highlight some of that cracking that we got happening. Give it a little bit more of that textural look and then I'll take some pics and I'll show you what it ends up looking like when we're all done. So this, the techniques that we use here in terms of, um, you know, just a little bit of the milk paint. I, again, you know, I'll do more milk paint. I get a lot of requests about it since on the, on the website, Queen Bee Creations Home, Dot com. I do have the Sweet Pickens line. Just know that whether you choose to use the extra bond or not, you know, using the extra bond is no guarantee that you're going to get, that you're going to avoid any chipping. Um, 
But as you, as you saw, it's also not a guarantee that you're not going to, that you are going to get chipping. You know, I, I, I would have liked some and I didn't really get any. And part of that, I think, is because this was new raw wood. If I was doing the milk paint over another surface, um, another type of paint, I, I, I might have gotten um, a little bit more. And even, you know, just even um, the, other, the other one that I painted green first, it was all kind of, the DIY paint also sort of works as a bit of a stain. So I think that we lost some of that paint going seeping down into that fresh raw wood. And that's perhaps why I didn't get some of that chipping happening as well. I'll do it again. I'll try it again on other, other pieces and we'll see how it goes. It doesn't mean that I don't like the look though. And these have, uh, again, some of that wear, some of that character. And that was the beauty of putting, um, of putting that dark and decrepit on first that I got some of that, that dark piece that I could uh, distress back to with some of those edges and, and things, which again, I wouldn't have gotten otherwise because we just had that light pine. So hopefully you picked up some tips along the way. And certainly if you're looking for ways of being able to, you know, age and distress some pieces to add a little bit more character that you get into doing some of that paint layering and um, some of that distressing using some of the the DIY products like the dark and decrepit or the decrepit dust and seeing how that goes for you. As always, I appreciate your being here. I hope to see you next week. Until then, take care.